conditions. Uh, so today and the next Thursday we talk more about the country conditions. So uh, last time we talked with you about that, but now we discuss more. Uh, before we move on, I'd like to show you a quick clip. Whether you will believe or not, this is your Watch carefully to see any kind of uh, magic there, any kind of uh, uh, Thank you. 
but whatever thought, how about that's why your mind raises more sometimes. So we go with experience when we when I decide the mantra, the mantra they they, they have by themselves they have the meanings. This but each mantra, like Uman Babi Ho, it can have many, many different types of meanings. So they don't translate word by word. So we just decide that plus the mantra in Buddhist view is just like um, like the password of the Buddha's Buddhist but the way they talk, the way they communicate with each other. Like you know how you know how the road talk with each other, the animals talk with each other, they have different languages, different sounds. So when they we decide certain type of mantra, we can go or we can, we can say that imitate that type of, of sound from the Buddha and Bodhisattva. That's why we uh, we get the blessing, we get we get to that type of channel um, so between, between our mind and, and the Buddha mind. And that's what we that's why we could feel that type of blessing. Plus when we yeah. Oh, I was just wondering, um, if we were to recite Manchu, um, do we have to speak it in that language, or can we say it in English? In, uh, in our tradition, this is a really funny story. Um, there's one old lady, somehow, um, uh, one day, yes. uh, there's one monk, can uh, stop by her house and taught her to recite that mantra, Omadi Bhakti Mok, right? And she decided for her thing and sincerely. Until the point that uh, actually before he, he gave that mantra to her and, she, and he said that, well, whenever you decide a mantra, you pick, all right, this is the, uh, this is the model, you pick a, a, a little rock and put into that that model uh, and she, she did that let's say when he, she decided over the people one time to pick a little rock and put into that little uh, uh, bottle and eventually the rock jumped into the bottle by with himself can you talk, can you believe that you may not believe right but the rock does the rock didn't jump into uh, the bottle, but her mind moved the rock. That is what the medium is for, not the rock by itself. So, uh, another day, there's another mom who stopped out of the house and listened to the way that she she, she decided that mantra. They said, no, you decide wrongly. That's not, that's not the way we're supposed to decide. You have to decide this way, and so forth, in different tones. So, yeah, uh, she followed him to decide that mantra, the same mantra, but different part, different pronunciation or sound. So the rock didn't jump into the, uh, the, bo the bottle anymore. Why? Because of destruction. You understand that? So that, that's why. That's why if in Buddhist view, if you really sincere to decide, uh, the mantra of whichever is tends to move with your mind. That's just what it's about. And that's why in other traditions, whether you believe in God or whichever, you, you recognize this type of miracle because it's only for you, because of that type of sincere sincerity. What's the number? Another function, another function of uh, deciding mantra is that I, I told you, whenever we see, we hear, we test, the thought will come up, no matter what. Right? That's why we have that kind of recent cause. So when we decide a mantra without other attentions, what happens? We go beyond, we go beyond the thought. It's like cleaning the mind. You know the boss here? So again, this is like um, 
you don't when you decide a mantra, you don't you don't think anything. You can decide orally. And with that sincerity, you go beyond the parts of your mind. And that state of mind is your pure mind. And again, I have that experience so many times. That's why that's why I keep keep deciding the mantra before or after meditation. This will be helpful. So there is no experience so depend upon you. Uh, whether you understand or recognize it, this is you for you, okay? So that's that's what I like to talk briefly. Um, and um, and just remember, remember somehow we have all type connection. We are interdependent, right? We will learn about that, right? And you can recognize us physically, mentally, and spiritually. In three, you can say that in three dimension. In in the material life, in this mental life, mental in the mental level and the spiritual level. So that's why. That's why if you have the faith, or the proper faith, your your life is much much better. Uh, in this, I mean, that this uh, this daily life plus when you get older, you have that faith. You you don't have to uh, be afraid much before you go, right? Or that's my direction for today. So that's why that's why meditation and the mantra recitation is so important. It's, that's why in Buddhism it provides all kinds of techniques for people to follow. Not so one type, not one way. Not the faith, not meditation, not translation, but any other ways that you can practice, that's your own choice. It's like you go to the school, right? Like this school, you have what? Energy, energy major, uh, we, uh, are, you, you may go to um, the uh, doctor and so forth. So all kinds of majors that you, you can pick up depending upon which major you like. Alright, so let's move on. The first one is Ryan's. Tantric Buddhism. Uh, you look at that? Okay, the Tantric Buddhism in India, Tibet, and Central Asia. Mm. Who had done this one? Mm. Okay, let me go briefly again. That, um, what do you call it? The Raven. Vajra has been diamond. Diamond, and um, actually, according to the traditions, it starts with um, some uh, ascetics who didn't follow the traditions of the, of the Buddhist traditions, uh, like doing the um, samatha, the Hansa meditation. But they took off uh, to go to the forest or mountain to do some kind of practice. Uh, according to the, uh, the scholar, they, they start these traditions from third, from third century to the even the 10th century, and, and they actually somehow they were influenced by some type of Hindu practice too, especially called the Tantra, Tantric traditions. And um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Vajra, that's why it's here. This is start with what they call the Siddha traditions, and um, this is from the 13th the century. That they use some type of methods. This is, this is out the traditional or out of the norms of the Buddhist traditions. Okay. And uh, they use some type of tantric. Actually, uh, even even uh, within the Pali uh, Kenyan or uh, the Rada tradition, it has some kind of mantra that the Buddha suggests uh, the monks to decide. You know, let me put this way. When the Buddha comes, you know, it's all kind of people join with the Sangha. They become Buddhist monks and nuns. So they came from different, uh, different um, traditions. They, have diff they, have, they came from different cultural backgrounds. And even they have practiced some kind of Hindu practice or the, um, the recent practice before. So they, they carry this kind of practice with them. So that's why the Buddha based on that their their needs to provide certain skills, certain teaching that are for their needs. And, and plus that's why somehow he he provide uh, the mantra and so forth for them to decide. 
um, to to practice. And um, and this is the tantra. And here you see that the Vajrayana adopt Indian tantra. This is one of the fierce form of Siva. Siva is one of the uh, the god in Hinduism, and it turns into uh, Yamataka in the Bengali traditions. Uh, probably you may not attend uh, Karachaka initiation before. Uh, you don't know, but it was with uh, that is a still important initiation in Tibetan traditions that they live, they put up this kind of image. Uh, it is like one of the the, uh, the, uh, the deities, the garden deities with their traditions. And that means they adapt many different deities from Hindu traditions into Buddhism. Um, and it's this influence for all these that is that's from um, the Hindu tradition too. And the point is that the important, uh, I should, I don't need to start for a while, but still, I will talk later on about the philosophy. But the important is to re recognize the Buddhahood, to, uh, to activate the Buddha nature, uh, to become, I can say that in general, become a Buddha in your present life, is of taking time to do meditation. And that's what I talk about. The Vajra tradition, and this 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 happened in I mean that the Tibetan and Central Asia countries was influenced greatly by this tradition because you know uh, during the uh, 12th or 13th century when the Muslim came and they, they destroyed all all the all the Buddhist monastery as well as uh, the monks and now so the Buddhist monks and then they fled to in, from India to Tibet and uh, they fought and so forth. So they spread out this kind of teaching, uh, the Tantra teaching from there. Mm. Alright, so they get one to go over briefly. Alright, so the next one, uh, Francis, have you uh, look at this one yet? Uh, a little bit. Okay. My understanding is that Tantric mm -hmm. on the Japanese culture is more of a mystical type of practice and is more is also more esoteric like the other one was I can't remember the name of it but I spoke about it on Tuesday and that's all I got so far and it says it's a different practice is through oral transmission and it has the student has to have certain level of maturity because taken the wrong way the interpretation can be bad as a bad influence on the student. That's my understanding. I don't know much about uh, the Christian and Catholic tradition. We have some kind of not mantra but some type of what uh, is what what is called. Yeah. Uh, I don't know like well I'm a civilian and we have very similar things to Catholics, but we do like the Lord's Prayer and the Nicene Creed, and we do, um, I don't know what we call them though. I'm trying to think, you know, yeah, but they're not. You did a prayer, right? The yeah, prayer. it's kind of like a prayer, but it's a very specific, yeah. I remember when they attend the, um, uh, the conference, uh, one of the largest um, Catholic monasteries in St. Paul, I forgot the name, so whether you know. In St. Paul, Minnesota, I forgot that. This is a pretty famous uh, uh, monastery, the Catholic monastery. And um, from morning to night, I saw that the, the Catholic monks and nuns, they went out to do the prayer continuously. For me, I cannot stand that. <laughs> uh, of course, I prefer to do meditation, but some sort of um, uh, restoration to But somehow I could feel, I could feel that energy. Uh, so, again, unless you were there, you would recognize oh, it's, it's not easy to destroy, right? Yeah. So, so this, is, this is a similar way, but it depends depend on which, whichever you do the prayer or whichever you do the, 
uh, registration for the mantra or for the Buddha name and so forth. You have that kind of energy. You have that kind of connection with God, with Buddha, or with deity, with whoever. But it's so important to remember that. You live in this kind of work as a way of life, in spiritual life, in, in the mental life, as well as in material life, too, not one, one dimension. All right, so um, what, this one, you want to say something about this? I don't remember. I don't remember. You want to say something? Um, what I just heard from the Bible, about how um, the people. And what if you want to do? Have them? Oh, I'll go ahead with this. Mm -hmm. new tantric Buddhism and so there were two main uh, texts that were most important to kind of the spreading of the tantric Buddhism or esoteric Buddhism and so it was the Mahavirokana Tantra and then the Tatvasamgraha Tantra and so um, basically it's there's a lot of relation uh, of esoteric Buddhism to Shingon Buddhism mm -hmm. and then so uh, it became so popular that during the Yin Dynasty uh, basically when the Mongols kind of occupied China uh, they made esoteric Buddhism kind of like the, the main religion <clears throat> of China and then so a lot of Tibetan Lamas were given uh, patronage and they were they held a lot of executive positions in the court. Um, but up until the Ming Dynasty, when the Chinese overtook the Mongols and then kind of kicked them out of China, they said that you know this kind of Buddhism wasn't good and that it was kind of sacrilege against what the main ideas of Buddhism were. But now it's still being practiced in a lot of different Chinese-speaking countries like Taiwan, uh, even Japan, China, we still have a couple of um, couple of groups that still practice uh, esoteric Buddhism. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Chan, want to say something about this? Um, basically, he said almost everything. I um, just wanted to add that uh, it's called a uh, it was the flourish during the Tang Dynasty, and it was referred to as Tangmi in China. Um, it arrived in the 7th century through the Silk Road from India, like I said, in the three Mahasattvas. Um, they also recite, well, what I read was they like to use the Surah during Dhamma Sutra and the mantras, and that's all I have. Okay, here, yeah. uh, since so this is related much with mythism, so I don't know whether you have some type of feeling when you go to the forest or when you climb up the mountain. You, you have a stuff as far as mm -hmm. this is quite different dimension, different feeling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we live in the city, right? Even, even. When you visit your friend's house, you go to school, you go to the shopping center, each place has different preparation, have different energy. 
Is that right? Mm -hmm. So, but that's why, that's why many people they prefer to stay in the suburban area or quiet area and work in the city. Uh, it is a lot of destruction, a lot of. Uh, uh, yes? Oh, um, I just read an article that was saying that there's like this um, dirt What is that? Or like you go like where there's a lot of trees uh -huh. and it's just a way of therapy. Uh -huh. And it's like it's a, like there's a uh, study for showing that especially is very impactful, like in a good way for mm -hmm. a state. Yeah. Even when you go to the beach, right? You see the vast ocean and you just say, Oh <laughs> <laughs> you go, you climb up the mountain, right? Nothing for you to think. Right? That's that's the spirit of there, that's that's can let flow of all of this function of the confusion of your mind because that has peaceful place and of course in the spiritual level it is it's a pet to our mind too whether we call God or whichever we believe in so that's why you know somehow the bad people they more they, they, they more eager to to uh, follow this type of contradiction because it's all kind of Buddhism over there actually before uh, Buddhism spread to um, the Tibet, they follow what called Bon. You know Bon, right? You don't know? Mm -hmm. um, bon is the indigenous traditions that, uh, that the Tibet the people uh, follow and believe before Buddhism uh, arrived. So, anyway, so that because we with all kind of that's why somehow they prefer to. This kind of contradictions that's what about. Now, um, like some of you just mentioned, yes, um, uh, this three master went from India to China during the 70, because during the 7 or 8th century to spread uh, this kind of contradictions, and what you call the Eastern tradition. But somehow later on, it died out, and only this monk, Kukai, the Japanese monk, who went to do those time. We started not directly from this Indian monk, but from the Chinese monk who learned from, from the Indian uh, uh, master. And when he went back to Japan, he, did, he developed this Sinkong, or the country tradition in Japan. It still survives now, up to now. But in China, it's no. But it's, it's planned, it's planned with um, meditation, with country, and so forth, because of the influence from the beneficiaries. So uh, let me move on. After that, we can, we can make the conclusion, the difference between the demonstration and the same comment. All right, um, let me see. Greg, uh, why do you want to say about the theories and practice of tantric traditions? Um, I don't know to that one yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. So who knows? What is the theories? What is the principle? What was the, what's the, uh, what's the theory behind behind this tradition? The theories, the important thing is that look at the ultimate goal. Ultimate goal to become Buddha. Remember this. Remember this. Uh, remember in the Karak traditions, right? Um, the goal for the practitioners to do meditation is to what? Achieve Nirvana, right? This is from Mahagana. Uh, uh, and the time to do it. Uh, and for the Theravada. The goal is Nirvana. But here, in the cards, for Mahayana religion, yes, the goal to come Buddha. We take times. It had, you can say, millions, million years, or many, so many decades, so many compass, so that we can accomplish or to become a fully Buddha. Of course, last week we talked about the, uh, the pure land tradition, right? That's a weak way. If it is take time, you not, you don't have that kind of patience. Here, decide the name. You go there, and it's like a, uh, you. Um, if as well as you go there, you eventually become Buddha. It's the same here. Like you go abroad to study. Um, 
right? so that there's no, no obstruction. That's one way. In the tantric tradition, it works a similar way, but you hear, you walk here, you practice here, and you become Buddha enlightenment, awaken right here, now. Not you don't need to go to Buddha land. And with this plan only, and that's what a quick way, a, a fast way to practice. And that's why later on, you see, especially the deity yoga, I emailed to some of you that I made mistake. That's then you have a deity yoga, it's a bit different. Or so again, the goal is to become a Buddha here, to achieve enlightenment here. But still, of course, for me too, when I, um, when I started with some Tibetan master, and even I talked with Dai Lama, of course, it, uh, I could feel some of their achievement. But uh, of course, of course uh, obviously I, can, I could not recognize that they are real Buddha. But at least I could feel some kind of, uh, some kind of achievement that they have there. Especially Dai Lama, I told you last time, right? It's, he practiced what they call compassionate mind. This is like a, like a magnet to attract people. That's, that's what this virtue is. Of course, we don't call, call him a, a real Buddha, but at least that is one of the, the virtue of the Buddha. And one of my, um, my Tibetan uh, master, he has that type of virtue, you can say that skill too. Um, one of my laymen, uh, he, uh, he drove my Tibetan master from Louisville to, to Indiana, where we, where we have the center there. And it's, it, took, it, it usually takes us 45 minutes to drive without traffic. Uh, sometimes they call five to one hour. So that late man, he followed me for many years, but this, he, when he, he rolled my master to my temple, he said that, you know, from Louisville, you know, Louisville is a small city, it's much smaller than this, uh, this city. But there's a lot of traffic too. And he said that when the master sat there, whenever he, whenever he went, he, uh, he drew his car to the traffic light, it's just wind, all wind. <laughs> and this, he, he so, he, he could not believe what he, what he said, what he saw. From Louisville to, to my place. That's why later on he, he had that type of trust, that type of, yeah, kind of trust to, uh, to Buddhism. So again, you can say the miracle and say that when someone has some kind of achievement, some kind of practice, you know, in, in Buddhist view, God, Buddha, and Buddhist follow them and protect them because of that type of achievement. This is so powerful. And even, even my, my Chinese master, too, when, I, when I stood in front of the altars and they hit the, um, you know, the, what you call it, the drum, and when he, when he just entered the gate, entered the door of the, um, the, uh, the chanting hall, I could feel the whole energy come along with him. And I don't know, I don't know whether you have <coughs> met that type of people yet, but for me, for me, I met so many of them, especially my, my master and Dalai Lama and all the Tibetan uh, uh, master. Who is, do you feel that too? How? I just had different experiences around the people I meet, mean, the things uh, that have happened to me personally, that it just, I don't know, there's too many things in life that are not to be coincidence or, or and I think we tend to believe things based on our own comfort level. Mm -hmm. Like it's comfortable for you to to believe something that you do, and if it's not comfortable for you to believe that it could be true, then you don't. Mm -hmm. Is this something you have that? How can you share it? Um, a good friend of mine, his mother is uh, clairvoyant, and she has a very distinct energy about her. You can walk, you can walk into a house and feel that she's there. Yeah. And naturally, you know, this is many, many years ago, even when it was late men, right, like you guys, just, uh, back in the 80s. Even before taking the test, I decided to match up too. It kept, of course, it kept me to cool on my mind. Plus, I believe there's a certain type of power that would be helpful to me. 
So um, it's just so many years, so many years since you can say that I practiced this kind of mantra meditation for how many decades and good feel that energy. So again, it is up to you to believe. All right. So let's go back to, okay, again, the theory is that, uh, yes, you practice, you decide the mantra until the time, until the point that you are in the same level as other people. But like you turn on the channel, you turn on television, or you turn on YouTube, mm -hmm. right? C CNN, BBC, channel, whichever, you are the same too. Or even when um, you drive the car, the car on the road and you turn on the music, right? If you turn on the right channel, you listen to that, that music the same way. So, all right, so, um, and the practice is, is involved with prestation, with oral prestation, with the mudra. You may move around with, with the mudra. You know that? You have to know mudra? You know that? Mudra is just like um, <coughs> the hand gesture. And uh, you will see, I will show you um, a short video clip. Um, it's what they call mudra here. Yeah, it's called hand mudra. You see that? You see that? Can you see? Yeah. All right. That's why. Remember when you went to my monastery, you saw the Buddha. Is is the one statue is in the middle. He sit like this one. This is mudra, and the uh, Amitabha he, he stand with this mudra. That's called mudra. The hand and gesture. And each most is uh, mudra has different meaning. Is yes. like uh, I'm sorry, it's like when when people angry with show what what they curse right with their hand right <laughs> with their finger right yeah. the same too right whether it's one or two or two the same of course this is the hand you cannot become how we understand that but that's what the mudra is for and we'll see I will show you sharply later on how they, uh, they practice so again this is more with the mind with the action uh, with with the um the restoration or restoration plus the mudra we move around okay let's um yes uh, uh, jesus you want to say something about the motive the goal the motive of uh, tantric buddhism um i read that i guess it's like they want to achieve duality with uh the Holy One, like the ultimate being or whatever, and uh, they do it, I guess, through yoga more than anything else, like that's their preferred practice. They really don't, I mean, I, I guess they do use it, I guess, like, as like a meditation type of practice, but it's more about trying to achieve like the next level, I guess, of being one with your Creator. Mm -hmm. All right. So I just explain to you the, the theories and practice of uh, tantric tradition. And what do they want to mention here? <laughs> that the motive, the goal is to become Buddha, to achieve that level, a state, a state of mind. Uh, and the motive is what? To help sentient beings, to help everyone, not for yourself. So we heard about the black magic. Right? So this is for what? For sale benefit, right? They cheat people but using this type of drug magic of what? Uh, a hack, people, computer, and so forth, right? So, but this for, for your sale benefit for them, for their own benefit. But the motive in this tradition is to help other people. So when they have the kind of motive, they have the kind of motivation, you won't help anyone. Whichever thing you practice, if you have this, the skill. Let's say if you if you have the um, the knife, for example, you hold the knife, right? The big knife, the big sword knife. And if you know, oh yes, I get used to cut things, not to harm others. It's different from when you hold a knife or any kind of weapons with your anger, uh, angry thoughts. You understand that? So it start with motivation. We start with intention. What do you want to do with that kind of practice? What do you want to do with that kind of tools? What do you want to do with your education? Whether you want to become a doctor, engineer, so for your own benefit or helping others. If you want to become a doctor, yes, great, you have people 
but we call it some some kind of standard, right? Some doctor may cheat the the, um, uh, the patient or uh, the, uh, the government and so forth. So it depends upon the motivation. If you have proper motivation, whatever you do, is you will follow that motivation. Especially in this tradition, yes, they decide some type of mantra that is so powerful. But the point is to become Buddha and to have chance to be this. Period. That's the, that the proper, that the generous motivations. Otherwise, it must be harmful. Okay, now let's move on. Ritual, Christina Union? Oh, yes, want to say something about ritual? <coughs> what is it about? That they're bringing in um, the bar, the rabbit, the temples. Well, Rajana, rab, rab, mm -hmm. or temple traditions, yeah. And that they sometimes use mandalas for. Like a, a diagram of direction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can include uh, music or mantra recitals, meditations, <coughs> sometimes a pilgrimage, a pilgrimage. Yes. Have you watched this one? Uh, did, did you do too? How can you do this? Um, let, me, let me see whether I have this here. It says they sometimes worship a bottle of fish bar, mm -hmm. yeah. which is the one that um, when we went to your temple, was, did we do a, a meditation for him? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Virtual here, the way that like uh, in the audition, right? You did the prayer with the piano, right? What else? Uh, with some kind of music that enhance with the flute, right? Uh, and I know it's more of a uh, kind of moms and then they know to play piano well, right? <laughs> but last time when you, some of you went to the temple, you see the nun, she used the wooden fish and the bell. This is like the ritual, this is like a, what they call Dharma instrument um, to do that with the ritual. Right? But for me, uh, less than uh, 30 minutes of one hour is okay, but not more than that, I um, will not take it. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually do it ritual, it's not deep, it's not fine. Uh, let me show you a short clip about, I think uh, this one is better. Mm -hmm. this, uh, I did delay to you. Okay, what do you call here? Green Tara. Um, and it includes um, 
like meditation, uh, helping others through oral teachings, like the retention commission, uh, and, and my present as well. Uh, and it's basically the, the goal of it is to help others. Is this the yeah, please. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, and so the, the point of it is it's called Upaya, and the point of it is kind of others achieve wisdom and happiness. Yeah, let me ask you when you when you start so much for your final, for your thesis, so what do you do after you sit higher? But when you look at the book, you don't want to see anymore. What do you do? Pay yeah. now. And where else? Go to the gyms. Right? Or hang out. Or go to Shut. Facebook, right? Just a means. The experience means to relax yourself. Or even sometimes uh, when you, uh, uh, let's say if you study uh, art, for example, right? instead of drawing something that your professor or teacher wants you to draw, you draw different things. So that you can be relaxed. You can, you can enjoy your work. That's the experience means this for. Right? You don't refocus. On to study all the times, you don't focus your work all the times. Right? So that is again for you to do. So for me too, sometimes, yeah, I don't, I don't pray every day. Uh, I, yeah, of course I, I do meditation and recite mantra every day, but uh, but I, I need sometimes to relax too. You know, I have to um, read uh, your guys' works, you know, the paper for more than one students. And sometimes it's hard, it's entire when you look at the computer. Uh, uh, anyway, so this good experience means we, um, we use them so that uh, we can enjoy the work. But the ultimate goal, uh, the ultimate goal is to, to do the practice, but in the meantime, you have to be flexible. Or like, you know how to sail in the boat on the, uh, on the river? <coughs> have you done that before? So you have to go with the flow. Sometimes, sometimes um, it's, uh, it's COVID, sometimes it goes straight. Or even you driving, right? When you drive in the car, sometimes it goes straight. Sometimes you have to go this and that, as this and so forth. You know, you can depend on, on how you, you deal with this in a flexible way. That's what experience means. And in, in contradiction, when they do, when they hold the bell, the hand bell, when they, when they sing, or not the singer, they do decide the mantra, or they, they do kind of some kind of mudra. This is it's really mean to concentrate the mind. Mm. Yeah. All right, so move on. Next one, uh, the vows. Don't it, Steve? You want to say something about the vows? Uh, yeah, sure. What is the vows? Uh, like they, uh, like you refer to like the vows is uh, like or like precepts as like a uh, samaya. And that's um, it's like part of the initiation of a student into like the tantric tradition. And um, why so important? The vow of conduct in the tantric tradition, in Theravada, Mahayana tantric, especially tantric tradition, why so important? To have that vow, to have that conduct, why? You know why? Uh, no. No. You know, you go to school, you have to follow certain type norms. Set type of, uh, of rules, right? Uh, and when you go, when you are at work, you you follow that type of rules at work, whether it's the Vedano or company and so forth. So everywhere we have to follow certain type of norms and rules. So there's the vow and the, uh, the conduct in the tradition. The important is to help ourselves and help others, not to harm others. Whichever whichever rules, whatever vows, but they they call the the whole basic grounds emphasize on that, on that themes. All right. Joseph, you want to say some more? Um, yeah, it's just the vows of uh, the tantric tradition requires them to keep the vows until they reach enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Even through the uh, death and rebirth process, the vows stay with them through uh, a mental continuum type Why? of Why? Why do you think that when they stay with them? You know, remember we talk about the eye consciousness, whichever thing we see, we hear, we test, it's stored in the, the storage, the eye consciousness, right? This is the computer, this the C drive of the computer. We store everything there. The more you decide, the more 
memorize, you need to remember. Whichever way, that's why we talk about uh, the gifted children, when, right? When they were young, they're so young, they know how to play piano, how to start some kind of certificate, math, and so forth. So that's, that's why it is imprinted in their mind so many lifetimes. And that's why the more you do, it's easy for, for you to, to, to do the practice. Especially, this is why for you to choose your nature if you don't know how yet. Especially for the, for the freshman. You need to recognize the skill. You need to recognize what you like the best. Of course, at first, you listen to your parents, friends, and so forth, but you have to come back to your own. Whichever thing you like the best, whichever thing you you come comfortable with or with that. That is you. Okay, so again, this is a similar as about conduct. When you do it again and again, this becomes part of your life, becomes your your conduct, becomes your habit. Alright. Alright, so, so the next one we we'll have a lot. Uh, for the vision of China chart, Ivan, you want to say something? Is here? Uh, he just stepped out. Oh he just stepped out. Alright, you here? Yeah. Oh yeah, so I still forget your name <laughs> because you look far similar <laughs> some of you, so good to recognize. Alright, what is for the vision of Tantra, what are they? Um, I had a hard time, but um, I know that yoga was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that yoga was one of them. Okay. And uh, then Again, this one is just the typical terms that uh, we know. Do we have? What else? What else you find out? Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. C H A R Y A. Okay, all right, go ahead. And what is about? Again, what is the purpose of this kind of four classes of tantra? What is the purpose of practicing this kind of four, four classes of tantra? Um, I guess. Get this step, right? Okay. <coughs> About um, are you here? Yeah. 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 Behind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Someone want to say something about this? Yeah. Um. The first one is Kriya Tantra, which mm -hmm. is the ritual guiding practice, deity practice. It consists of rules for rituals and the construction of temples, which is mm -hmm. Um. The second one is Charya Tantra. Uh, which is a behavioral deity practice and based on rules of conduct, of worship, puja, observances of religious sites, rituals, um, festivals, and practice, which is a penance. Uh, yoga Tantra, which is the integrated um, deity practice. Uh, you can follow her, probably you may not follow much, right? <laughs> Alright, so... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yoga Tantra is the precept on yoga, the physical and mental discipline. And the last one is Anuttaya Yoga Tantra, which is the highest yoga deity practice. Yeah. And it's the only Tantra that works with the subtle energy system mm -hmm. of the body. Again, this is just the, uh, the typical terms. And you just yeah. know, know, in okay. case, in the future, who know? You, um, you may practice, if you, fall, if you go to uh, the Tibetan temple, or if later on if you learn more about Tibetan Buddhism, you may encounter this kind of terminology. Uh, what type of, is the, the Polish language is somehow connected with Sanskrit, right? Yeah. How? Is it close? Yeah, it's just, it's all Sanskrit. Huh? Terms. It's all Sanskrit. Um, the same? It's yeah. almost the same? Yeah. Oh. All right, so that's why you pronounce it wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so the first one, what do you call Please grammar, right? Kriya. Kriya. Oh, Kriya Tantra. Again, this action. We uh, concern with uh, external conduct, practice of mutual purification, like uh, in, what do you call empowerment. As the, the, the master may spread the water on the, on, on the people who want to do better initiation and so on. The first step and the second one is uh, again, these are the practice, you decide the mantra with the mudra and so forth. And, 
and later on the last one, the next one is yoga again. You go deeper into the practice. Um, and this is meditation, a skill for me that's again visualization and so forth. And the last one is the highest tantra, what do you call Anu? Anu has, what do you say? Okay, yeah, this is the highest one. Alright, I just want to go briefly about this poem and come back and we show you some interesting little tips. Alright, the next one, um, what inner and outer, Sarah, what you want to share? What's inner and outer? So the way I understood it was uh, simply like a division of focusing within yourself versus focusing on like connecting your body and mind. Okay. Like the inner would be the focus on like the the mantras and the meditation, and then the outer would be like the yoga, the different yogas. And the mudra. So. Right, and so the the thought is just to be able to take and connect all of your senses and all of yourself together so that you can, I guess, know yourself better and that way you can move along the stages of enlightenment faster. Mm -hmm. Let me give you one example. Um, have you ever uh, spoken in front of a big gathering, hundred people, a thousand people before? Not yet hundred people, right? How will you feel? How were you feeling at that moment? Nervous? We have what you call fear, right? Phobia, right? And what happened if at that moment you're so nervous that your, your mind wants to say something, but your mind say a different one, different thing? It happened, right? It happened many times. It happened if you don't have that kind of concentration. And that's why. Wherever we go, whichever we think, we need to have what we call unification of the mind, the mind action. That's the part in, in the country tradition is for. So when you are when you, when you want to say something, you you really focus on your saying. I guess and you pronounce, you express your feeling right, properly. Otherwise, even you want to say something, but your mouth says different one. Every score, everything. So again, this is the practice too, and even when you do the test too, right? So that's why meditation, that's why concentration is so important. And again, like you say, the outer is like you should uh, do the mantra, do the, the mudra, and so forth. In the mantra is, is, is the, the level here too, with this kind of um, level. This is in the, the top one is the outer, the top one we call the outer. The, Kisya Tantra, the Treya Tantra, the Yoga is going at the outer. And the other one is called inner. Inner highest uh, tantra. This is the this development stage. Uh, and there's many different stages uh, of achievement uh, what we call the inner tantra too. Okay? Uh, again, this one I get one to I think uh, you can use this uh, the uh, Anuttara Yoga Tantra is the highest one. When you really uh, focus your mind on that state of mind and decide the mantra, mudra, and so on, you, you, you achieve that state of mind. Go beyond the thought. The primal, the primal thought, the primal state of your mind. There's no more thinking at all. Have you ever that kind, had that kind of experience? <laughs> that, um, that somehow is some kind of, whether it's prayer or like I told you that if you go to the forest, if you, if you climb up to the high mountain, and you stay there. It's nothing. It doesn't mean there's nothing less in your mind, but you there. It's so calm. It's so peaceful, right? It's go beyond your thinking. That's what they call the, the high state of yoga practice there. Okay, so um, the last one. Uh, okay, Blake, you want to say something about the, not that, sorry, Deity Yoga, no, not that, I don't know I, I wrong, wrong. Okay. But what's, this, uh, what's about Deity? 
they have to act, they have to feel, they have to talk by that person. So does deity yoga. The important thing is that this is just one of the practice. You visualize, let's say Amitabha Buddha, let's say uh, compassion Bodhisattva, so, so forth. You visualize yourself as a Bodhisattva, as a Buddha, and you act like them, you feel, and you, you have to move the mantra, the mudra, and according to that Bodhisattva or according to that Buddha. You understand that? So, so that's why, this is one of the practice, like oh, who, who are, who are in the uh, pre med here? No? Pre med? Alright. So, but let's say if you are accepted into uh, medical school, what happens when you go to class? You may wear what do you call scrubs. What do you call this one? Scrubs. 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 The dress? Scrubs. The scrub? Yeah, like, 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 like scrub. Yeah. Scrubs. Okay. All right, so that's why you imitate, right? You, know, you practice to be doctor, to be pharmacist, right? Or to be nurses before you go out there to get the real jobs. So there's deity, uh, what do you call deity yoga? You visualize yourself as Buddha. Because the goal is to become a Buddha. You visualize yourself as great, great Bodhisattva, compassion Bodhisattva. So it transforms yourself. It helps you. From the, from the common, I mean, that the, the common levels of the mind into the enlightened mind. That's what the you know, native yoga is for. All right. So where's the paper? Oh, okay, you got done. All right. So um, again. So if you engineer, even. They train you, right? You might as engineer. Is that right? I remember that when they were in school, we have what they call um, uh, uh, technical writing, how to write letters, how to write response, as engineer. So that's why you come to school to train, to be trained as engineer, doctor, and so forth. That's what this is about. All right. So I think I can let you go a little bit.